Many of you have probably gotten the news that Dr. Michael Heiser died this past Monday. He had pancreatic cancer. He fought it as long as he could. And we're all sad that he has left us. Dr. Heiser was one of the most prominent academic scholars. He was an evangelical Christian, but he delved deeply into the biblical texts and the biblical world and context of both the Hebrew Bible, ancient Near East, the New Testament, the Greco-Roman world. He was really a wonderful teacher. He taught right up to the end. You can check out his YouTube channel. He and I were not personal friends, but we were certainly academic colleagues and it's exchanged emails and other correspondence and dialogue together back and forth. And I'm going to miss him. Derek Lambert, the host of Myth Vision podcast, yesterday did a two hour live tribute to Michael and he asked me to come on. And I pulled that segment out of the two hours where I talked to Derek about Michael and my relationship with him and my admiration for him and for his work. And I wanted to share that with all of you as my YouTube viewers. We have none other than the legend, the living legend, Dr. James D. Tabor. Welcome. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, I just got a notification. I didn't know you were doing this. We, we didn't get to talk today. And uh, we've been working on that Mark course and this Zoom meeting we're going to have on March 5th. So I'll just put yeah. that out there. That's right. You take the Mark course, you get to meet with us for two hours discussing Mark. Can you imagine anybody that's a student? But yeah, Michael, I, I saw him at, you know, SBL meeting, Society of Biblical Literature, and we spoke and we, in that sense, knew each other professionally, but mainly we carried on a pretty intense email conversation. And one, uh, I think I put it in the chat. I could try to uh, text it to you if I didn't. But mm -hmm. one uh, article he wrote, it's on his website. It, I want people to know it because you're going to see the graciousness of this guy. Um, he was responding to all my stuff about resurrection and yeah. particularly a post that I put out called why people are confused about the earliest Christian view of resurrection of the dead. And he, what he says is I want readers to know up front that Tabor's post is quite good, stimulating, thoughtful, ironic in tone, just plain old good stuff for those who enjoy biblical studies scholarship. Mm -hmm. Now, you get the point. Let me send you the link. What an introduction. Here's somebody that is arguing that Jesus is dead and not divine, and he knows my views. And yet I have a I've devoted 40 years to trying to understand the historical Jesus, his importance for Western civilization. And frankly, I don't spend I didn't spend 40 years on Plato. I spent probably two or three years on Plato. In Homer, because I majored in Greek in college, but I've spent 40 years studying uh, Jesus of Nazareth. So there's something there. Mm -hmm. You could say, yeah, but he's the most influential person in history, and he probably is. And the second would probably be Paul. Uh, although now I'm arguing that it's Mary, his mother, <laughs> that's the most yeah. influential. But we'll get to that. But anyway, just look at how Michael responds. It's just so gracious. And it shows what an absolute gentleman he is. And look how he says that it's good. Uh, I mean, to say this about a scholar, I'm a critical scholar, but as you know, I'm, he calls me ironic. That's kind of a compliment. <laughs> James so Tabor, or an essay. You should read that. And he's very respectful. And he, he writes back and then go to the comments because we go back and forth extensively discussing resurrection. So think about it, to get Mike and James Tabor debating, and he believes in the literal body, resurrection of the dead, and so forth. So, uh, and then this book, Michael, uh, put me back on full, because people can get the URL, you can put it in the, do you put notes in your lives? 
you know, he wrote a lot of books, but this book, particularly The Unseen Realm, anybody want, interested in biblical studies should read this book. Because You already said that, that he's talking, I've had people, you know how I took you up to Mount Hermon at, to the, we went up to that restaurant right at the foot of Yeah, Mount yeah, yeah. Really people good. People emailed me later and said, oh, you're at Mount Hermon. Did you know Michael said that's the seat of all the gods in the ancient Near East and so forth? It and makes sense right. with what he's happened. Right. It is. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's the difference. Michael believed these things, like right. the B'nai Elohim sitting in the council and Yahweh is among them. Psalm, what is it? Psalm 82 was one of his uh, main texts. So you've got all kinds of scholars that you've interviewed in the Hebrew Bible that talk about the same thing, but they think it's mythology. You know, it's just typical ancient Near Eastern mythology. So the great thing about Michael is he's not just opening his King James Bible and quoting it like a fundamentalist, you know, with no sense of history. Right. He knows the history. He, he believes and did believe uh, that if you look, and I should stay still believes because Michael thinks he's up with the council of the gods right now. And maybe he is right. uh, and uh, God bless him. But, Anyway, it's a great book and everything about angels and principalities and powers that works into the New Testament. I mean, you know, why would I recommend a book written by someone who's I, he's not a fundamentalism is a weird word, but yeah, I think he thought the Bible was certainly inspired by God. Uh, inerrant is a tricky word, because what do you mean? Like there's not a single letter wrong or something like that. He's, he's a conservative scholar. He certainly believed the Bible was the word of God and a revelation. Well, then we need to, if we're going to study it, we should know what it says. And look at the table of contents of this book is incredible. It's basically all the stuff I worked on on my PhD. You know, Paul's ascent to paradise. I have to know about levels of heaven, angels, principalities, powers. Paul calls them heights, depths. Things above, things below, the lower world, the upper world. Michael's the guy for that. Now, what you finally decide about it, you know, we all have our different views and presuppositions about reality. I personally don't tend to take those things literally, but I do think the universe is much more mysterious than any kind of reductionist, reductionistic person who thinks we've basically explained everything. Right. Uh, would say, I think consciousness is the great mystery. So my go to guy is Robert Kuhn on Closer to Truth, because he interviews and, and Lex Freeman. Uh, those are the two guys that bring in everybody from theologians to scientists. Well, I don't think Robert ever interviewed Michael, but he could have. He could have very easily interviewed Michael. And it wouldn't be like, why are you having that Bible thumper on? Because he's not a Bible thumper, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So anyway, I love him. And when I heard he had cancer, I wrote him and I was so sad. Yeah. And, you know, pancreatic cancer, man, it's fast and it's horrible. And uh, so uh, I really I'm going to miss him. You know, as I got onto YouTube and he was doing YouTube, I was thinking I would have him on. Uh, to talk about the heavenly world as he understood it. And uh, I didn't know he had cancer. But he if you go to his YouTube channel, he was speaking right up to the end. I looked the other day and I, you, you could well, check. I, I think some of them might be, and I could be mistaken. They here, could but, be older, but yeah. yeah. There could be like repeats of like clips from, from lectures. I do. Yeah, have I didn't check it uh, carefully, but it did yeah. look like some of it, uh, you'd have to look at the dates. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They could have put up something, but in some of those, well, actually, you know, you're right. Look. Yeah, see, he was looking frail. He knew he was. He he knew he was dying. Yeah. So, wow. Look at him just holding forth, and he's a beautiful man. He's such a beautiful man. He's super kind. When I talked to him, he was. Yeah. Like I said, he, he doesn't make you feel threat at all. You know. And I appreciate you, Derek, for this. Uh, approach that you take constantly with people because we have radical i don't mean politically but let's say in our little bible world radical left radical right 
we got crazy people, we got all these people, people that have visions and revelations themselves. Look at our comments on YouTube. Almost yeah. every day I get somebody said, I talked to Jesus this morning. Well, they probably think they do. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they obviously think they do. I don't think they're making it up. But I love the way you try to say, let's always be respectful. Let's listen. We can always learn. And even if you completely disagree with what somebody says, and after all, critical scholars don't agree. That's what makes yeah. it so fun, actually, that if you all agreed, what are you doing? You know, you know Paul, Paul Williams had, uh, what's his name, Ali. He's really sharp. He's a Muslim professor, has a Ph.D. Uh, he had him on the other day and I listened to him and I just completely did not agree with things he was saying. And he's a very devout Muslim and he was trying to defend it rationally. And but he mentioned Bart Ehrman. He mentioned me, he mentioned Paula Fredrickson. He mentioned uh Dale Allison. So I know he's been watching your stuff. <laughs> but uh, Well, that's a good sign. I, I, li I like the guy because I thought he would be somebody not just that you would debate with. You know, everybody always wants to debate. Like, I'll stand yeah. up for 20 minutes and make my points and then you make your points and then I'll have five minutes to refute you and you'll have five minutes to refute me. It, you know, and typically it's like two sides of a basketball game, you know. Like everybody's cheering their guy. And is anybody listening and deciding, well, man, uh, you know, I wonder how all this could work out together. You know, maybe uh, my bottom line on fundamentalism is the quote, uh, to be a fundamentalist, you have to have a holy book. This is in the West. You have to have a holy book and you have to forget that that book has a history. A holy book and then you say, I just read it and whatever it says, well, more and more evangelical Christians are not doing that either. Like they're yeah. like Michael, they're learning the background. They're not just to debate somebody because they want to understand. And Michael was an expert in Hebrew and Greek and biblical languages and history. So well, I know oh. that because our trip to Israel, you had some that were evangelicals, but they were way more open-minded than, you know, the fundamentalist. And you all, I mean, I have people who support me on, on Patreon to keep doing what I'm doing. And they say, they write me privately. I disagree with you, but what a valuable well, I, I, resource. I call these guys high-end evangelicals. They're my friends. <laughs> you know, David Capes, uh, Craig Evans, uh, Michael Heiser, these guys, they're, you know, they're just top-notch scholars they work side by side with the academy, with all the main people in the academy. We rub shoulders at all the annual meetings and we disagree on some of our presuppositions. But I mean, that's what I like about Bart too, is he comes from that, Bart Ehrman. Uh, most people, <laughs> we live in such a club, I can just say Bart. You should know who Bart, Bart is. is. Yeah. But he, you work with him a lot too. And Bart will, you know, just tell you, no, I don't think that's right. No, this, no, that. But he's willing to consider a lot of things that people wouldn't consider, you know, right. and he came from that background in terms of, you know, a more fundamentalist faith.